This is Twit. I am going to cheat a little bit because the final frontier isn't exactly tech. But here's the thing. It's enough tech. It's enough tech. And yeah. astronomers from the University uh, from the university College London have found water vapor in the atmosphere of a planet outside our own solar system. Uh. And I don't know what y'all think, but I think that's worth talking about. This is, this is big news. This is an exoplanet, meaning a planet that does not exist in our own solar system that has water vapor in its atmosphere that's not a gas giant. Mm. 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 Things like this make my brain hurt. <laughs> <laughs> now, why does it make your brain hurt? It, well, it makes my. I love it. By the way, I love this news. Part of it is is because like I I have a limited understanding of how, and I suppose we as as humans that exist only on planet Earth probably have a limited understanding of how how things work out in uh, out in space and everything. I'm even less than that. So for me, it's like this sounds amazing, and I and I recognize that when I start to think about the possibility of life on other planets and and and, and all this stuff it it just makes my it it like breaks me a little bit because i want to understand and comprehend more about it than we are even possible of doing and yeah. but but discoveries like this just make me real make me feel that maybe not in my lifetime but sometime we will discover something that is an active human life form somewhere else. Or maybe we won't. It's entirely possible that we won't. And we are literally the only in billions upon billions of these things wow. that, that has life on it. I doubt that's true. But anyways. Well, uh, speaking of that, I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit of a, a shout out. I uh, got to talk uh, not too long ago about all the ways that the world could possibly, that, that humans yes. uh, could go instinct. And that was on triangulation, I was on triangulation. Yep. Um, and when we were talking about that, one of the theories is that there is uh, intelligent life out there, uh, or at least there was at one point. But what happens is that when they get to the point of interstellar space travel or uh, even like to other galaxies, I guess is, is kind of the, the thing there. When they get to that point technologically, they end up killing themselves off before that ever happens. And so the reason we've never run into oh. an alien species is because there's something about the way that uh, that a species like grows and becomes more intelligent that they can never get past that point because they end up in some way destroying themselves. So it's a very depressing theory, but it's an interesting one nonetheless. I think that makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. Because when I start thinking about space and, and, and all this stuff, by the way, uh, Beatmaster points out in the chat room, only a little over 110 years to get there at light speed. Uh, so you're saying there's a chance. You're right. Um, but anyways, uh, when I start thinking about all this stuff, you know, I get confused because from our perspective here, it's so easy to fall into the trap of we feel like our world is the world because to us it is and it always has been in our own perspective. But there's so many our worlds out there mm -hmm. to probably someone else. And at the end of the day, like it feels kind of pointless. We are probably just like, a single organism living inside of like a drop of water, you know, <laughs> on top of a banana, yeah. <laughs> on top of a banana sitting in a pocket of some sort yes. somewhere. Yeah. And that's why it makes my brain hurt because as much as I want to understand it, we are probably incredibly insignificant in the grand scheme of things. And that's hard for humans <laughs> to hear because we are not built for that. Uh, yes. I do want a few, couple more data points. Uh, the planet yes. is called KT 18 B. Uh, K2. K2, thank you, not KT. Yep. K218B. Uh, sorry, uh, K2. Uh, and it is either a dense, rocky, cord planet with a thick atmosphere, or it is covered in a planet-wide ocean. But here's the deal. Uh, this data is so imprecise that scientists are able to put together a bunch of different models. And in one model, you've got a hydrogen-rich atmosphere with a lot of water and nothing else. Another, they think it could be a hydrogen and nitrogen-rich atmosphere with very little water. And then the third model, it's like water floating around in the upper atmosphere and high-altitude clouds. And so we don't actually know what would be on the planet's surface. Ooh. But most importantly, according to the models, this is what's like, oh, okay. Uh, it could be, it could be this this these percentages of water on on the planet. There's either zero point zero one percent water to fifty percent water. Oh, so somewhere a little in bit there. of a swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, we don't know. Yeah, there's a whole lot who don't know. We've detected water vapor on a planet that's not a gas giant on a 
somewhere outside of our solar system, but that's about it. We, yeah. who knows how much water there is. It could be a very, very, very minuscule amount. And that's just the imprecise nature of the technology that we have right now. Right. But according to that one theory, if we get any better, then we're all going to kill ourselves oh, off so in the end anyway. Yeah, totally. So, so why are we racing now. to do this now? Yeah, let's stop now. Seriously. Space race two? Uh, no. Or maybe that's just how our organism works, our, our it's, Earth organism. It's what we do. That exists inside of a drop of water.